Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, best place for long-term stock investors. Now, in today's video, it's gonna be an interesting one because DNEX just dropped more than 30% in one day. Now, we're gonna be discussing what is actually happening, so stay tuned. As a disclaimer, none of what we say should be taken as financial advice. This is purely educational. And as another disclaimer, we do not own any shares of DNEX as of this recording. Hey guys, before we begin, just to let you know, we have a totally free masterclass just for you to sign up for in the comment section or the description where we will guide you on how you can build a six to seven figure portfolio using the power of stock investing. Go check it out. Okay, MJ, so DMX yes. uh, mm. dropped more than 30% in one day. So what's happening? So as usual, I like to go to the edge. The edge actually gave a pretty good explanation. Now, mm. long story short, it's like that. In early in the year, in 2020, DNEX and CGP, which are the two shareholders for Sotera, one owns 60%, the other owns 40%, mm. agreed to do what we call an RC, no, sorry, an ICPS, ICPS right? Yeah. It's a way of fundraising for yeah. expansion into the future. Now, at that point in time, or in order for the ICPS to go through, what happens is that dilution would occur. Mm. Okay? Now, apparently, they have already agreed to sign, now this is according to DNEX, right? They have already agreed to sign scan copies of okay. this agreement to go through with it. Now, what happens is that DNEX realized that if they go through with this fundraising activity, their stake may drop below 55%. Mm. Now, why is that important? Because according to MITI or MITI, which are the guys who are responsible for giving out manufacturing licenses, the Malaysian company that owns the majority of any sort of assets like this, like Sutera, must own 55% or more. Mm. And so when you fundraise and you dilute yourself, well, you might drop below 55%. And so DNEX was like, hey, stop. We can't do this. We need to go and seek MITI's approval before we go ahead with it. Now, this is happening like, well, 11 months into the year when they had this agreement early on in this year. Mm. So uh, that's one question mark that I have. Now, as far as... CGP is concerned, which is uh, MIMAS, M-I-M-A-S, that's the vehicle in which they used to own uh, Sutera. Sutera, yeah. They don't think you need to go to MITI to do this. And they said, we have already signed, so it's legally binding. Now, this is according to DNEX, right? Mm. We do not know what CGP's point of view is. You know, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. And I believe they say something about scan copies. Yes. And, uh, Correct. So, they use the scan copies, but, but, to DNEX and their lawyers, they think the wet ink one is more important. Yep. It's the actually binding one. So you know wet ink is just, you know, original with, paper. Yeah, original paper, paper and paper, paper and things yeah. like that. So in order to address this issue, DNEX has decided to use the arbitration court to settle this. Mm. And this caused a spook in the market. Right, okay. So uh, what does this mean to their tech business, Sutera? I mean, now this issue is going on, right? Yeah. So will their license be revoked? So at status quo, they still own 60% of the company. The ICPS has not gone through uh, yet. Mm. And so they are in quite a safe condition as of right now. I had the pleasure and fortune to meet uh, Dato Sri. For those who don't know, Dato Sri is this guy right here. Mm. Dato Sri is yeah, Saizanel. Saiz Saiz okay, right. And he seemed pretty calm uh, when we met him through a Zoom uh, meeting and you no know, business uh, as usual. Okay. Now, Sutera is also in a much stronger financial position, if you look. So if you compare, this was in 2021, you know, they had 200 over million in cash, and today they have 754. And even if you account for the increase in loans, right? So there's about 200 here, and that's probably around loans- 80, here. Uh, yeah. 80, 80 million. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it accounts for some of the cash increase, but mm, not all. Right. Now, why that is the case is simply, uh, if you look at the cash flow from operations, they've grown quite a bit compared to the previous year, 
which is I believe a lot less, like yeah, 18 million. 18 million, 18 yeah. million becomes so 600 like a, million. Mm. So they're not too worried uh, about that. Now, of course, your question is, let's say if they are, will their license be revoked? Beyond here is just speculation. Uh, but my point of view is quite difficult because again, nothing has changed yet. Mm. The ICPS has not gone through. So they are still a legal company. Right. Okay, okay, got it. Okay. But uh, it's just my opinion. Could be wrong, right? This is an evolving and fluid situation. Okay. So uh but what is the relationship with uh CGP uh yep. going forward with the next now that this issue is happening, yep. right? Uh would they still be business partners yep. or how what, what So this question happen? was also asked to the Tosri mm. and he's basically saying, look, this is just a difference or uh, my impression is that it sounds a bit minor, but again, we don't know what CGP is actually thinking because uh, they've not released anything as of this recording. Mm. Um, now, they want to settle this professionally. That's why they use the arbitration court. And they don't have, uh, like someone asked, I remember, like, do they want to replace CGP? Um, from what I hear is that they are super focused on their Siltera turnaround plan. That is absolutely uh, uh, crucial, uh, I would say. Mm, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so... Let's 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 uh think something uh like negative. Uh, yeah, right? like yep. let's, let's play the devil's advocate. So what if D next loses? Yep. Uh, what does this mean to Sutera? Uh, obviously, it's not going to be good, right? Oh, before that, I just want to allude to. I understand that the cash generated here is for the group, so it's not necessarily Sutera. Yep. But you know, Sutera, Heavily, yeah, contributed yeah, in yeah, yeah. But Sutera is slowly picking back up. You guys can mm -hmm. look into the the okay. financial numbers. And before I answer your question, I think it's important to note also is that CGP, right, is, and DNX has a very symbiotic relationship. So CGP wants to diversify away and create revenue through semiconductor chips to be able to sell to the West or wherever by coming to Malaysia because of the trade war and all the yep. restrictions. And of course, Malaysia gets to build, you know, to move up the tech value chain, mm. right? Instead of just doing like ATE, OSAT, they can now do Foundry, right? Pure play Foundry. So uh, to your question, right? What does it mean to say, that? well, it's just gone. If DNX loses, mm. um, DNX will lose Sutera, but whether or not Sutera will be still be around, well, it could be that the assets are then being acquired by someone else uh, who has the, the capabilities. Um, fun fact for you, the guy who owns Green Packet, was also bidding for this. Mm -hmm. So they'll, right. they'll, I'm sure there will be suitors la, who want to buy it. All right, interesting, interesting yeah. facts. All right, guys, if you didn't know, we have a one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where you can apply for, where we level up your stock investing based on tailor-made solutions. If you're interested, you need to apply. Not of all of you all will get into an interview. It's only 20% of you all will do it and even fewer will get to hop on the program. But if you're confident that you can qualify, you can click on the link and fill in your details in the comment section or the description. Okay, I see that you also like pull up this uh, CGP's fund management yeah. that they actually manage, uh, I'll say maybe even more than 20 billion. Yeah, yeah. yeah so UN, uh, right. this is, should be UN. Yeah, UN. yeah so uh, what does this actually tell us? Does that yeah. mean that they won't really pursue this case? Yeah, really, again, it's all speculation, mm. but it's one to note that given their size, right, whatever they spend, even 100, 200 million um, with DNX, right, it's not going to be like a big amount. Mm. And so the relationship could be, if it's soured, you know, yes, they can still stay around. Obviously, they don't want to lose the investments. Who are they going to sell to? Are there buyers? Things like that. But they may not be as enthusiastic anymore. Or they may not want to give all this uh, IP and mm. you know technology transfer for Sutara to grow and just let it you know, just float. So that is a distinct possibility because again, um, I could be wrong, but uh, it doesn't seem to me that Sutara is absolutely crucial to CGP. And I don't think the, Chin the Chinese would want that to happen anyway. Right. Okay. Okay. Uh, speaking of Chinese, right. Yeah. So there's this Chinese news article, yeah. uh, which is by the BZ Weekly. Uh, it's also something to do with the ICPS, mm. uh, the mm. preference share issue. So uh, basically what the Chinese newspaper said is that uh, if let's say the CGP 
assuming yep. they are right, right? Assuming they do exercise the mm-hmm. preference share, it means that uh, they will own more Sutera. I, yeah. I believe it's around like uh, 60% and then the next will be 40%. So is this speculation or? I, I mean, I need to, to check the math, math accurately. Yep. Uh, I don't know whether the quantum and magnitude is correct. Yeah. But what is for sure the case is that they will drop below the 55%, okay. uh, this is the next. Yep. And they would cause a revoking of the license. Right, okay. But so far, the next is pretty confident that they own 60% of Sutera. La. Yes, that's the impression that they are giving. La. And mm. that's the impression that they have given also here. If you go all the way down, right uh, here, they don't see any material right. financial Except impact. Except for the legal costs. Uh, Potentially. Yes, legal costs. yes yeah. correct. Okay. okay, fair enough. Okay, now the final question mm. that most mm. investor wants to know yes. is that, what should the next investor or potential investor yeah. do? So it seems like everything is pointing that losing the license is actually pretty low at probability wise. Mm. Because if you think about it, right? Um, if let's say the next wins, okay, then they win, lah, right? Mm. But if they lose, everyone kind of loses. If you think about it, the next will lose, but CGP will lose also. Mm. And then Malaysia will lose also because you know, you have to remember that this project was initially born by Kazana. Kazana sold it to these two parties. So I don't think that, I mean, it's a lose, lose, lose situation. Like if, mm-hmm. if things don't go business as usual, unless, you know, they can sell off the assets and someone's ready to buy, then that person will be the winner. Um, one thing that I think is important for investors to know, and certainly some a question that I have is, why was this 55% not known or understood by both parties, yep. CGP and DNEX? Now the charitable interpretation, or at least one of them is, they forgot, <laughs> la. they didn't realize, right? Yep. When they look at the, I think, I believe the Industrial Act of 1975, uh, some, uh, I mean, you guys can see here. Yeah, right, sorry, yeah, yeah. the Industrial Coordination, Coordination Act. Act of 1975, it say that the local company must own like 55%. Yeah, at least 55%. At least 55%, right? Right. So that's a charitable interpretation. The not so charitable one is that perhaps the next already knew this, but they needed to attract a partner. So when they let, and then maybe the part, the foreign partner says like, hey, look, we, we much prefer to be in control. So then the next could go to them and say, look, uh, you know, we will give you control after the ICPS. Mm. Not now, but after the ICPS, you control more as the Chinese, uh, you know, as the Chinese reporter said here. Yep, yep. Or even if it's not in control, they will give them more than 40%. Mm. Right? Right, right. Okay. So it could be that's the less charitable one. Now. I have no strong opinions as to what. I'm just saying these are the possibilities, something for you all to consider. Yep. Um. So that's that's another okay. thing. So, so uh, then my analysis really breaks down to into short and long term. Right, I think one management is like pretty calm about it, so you know, not they not to worry. But again, maybe is it a show? We don't know, right? But they seem very calm about it. Um, the relationship is not that easy to break with CGP, or at least the shareholding is because a lot of these contracts that they have with them are long-term agreements, very entrenched to use the word Dato Sri, is very entrenched. And so even after this arbitration or minor sort of dispute, um, you know, business as usual. Right. Right. And then of course, if they leave, like how are they going to sell it? You know, things like that. Who's going to buy? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, but as a long-term concern, right? Or before a concern, I was, just like to highlight that there are a lot of things that are positive for the next, right? Pure play go- global foundries are on the uptrend by and large, especially yeah. with the US China splitting or disagreeing. Um, non affiliated countries will start to gain more traction as far as investments is. Um, now, the big risk is that even if everything goes back to normal because of this rather sour episode. CGP might not be en- as enthusiastic, then they'll be like, whatever, right? We just have a stake, you run it, and they don't uh, cooperate a lot. Or worse still, maybe they look you know, elsewhere for these sort of solutions. Um, and the last one is that arbitrations can take quite long, anywhere between three to six months minimum. So as an investor, you need to know that. Lah. So now the question is, 
if you are already a shareholder, right, then my assessment to you is what I've just shared. If you are thinking of going in, you either you have two approaches. The first is you say, well, it's already undervalued, right? Obviously, if you're going to go in, you obviously yep. think it's undervalued. You think it's undervalued, right? So we have some valuation table here. It is just very optically cheap, right? Yeah, it's like, it's like four times uh, enterprise free. value to free cash flow. Mm. Optically cheap. Then all I would say is that consider the fact that markets are made up of fundamentals and psychology. And you might get it right on the fundamental part, but sometimes the psychology part plays a role as well. In this case, you can see that there's a lot of uncertainty. Yep. Who knows how the market will react on Monday, but there's a lot of uncertainty and people may want to wait before the arbitration is over first, then only they go into it, mm. right? That's a safe route. But if you don't mind taking um, more uncertainty, then obviously if you think it's undervalued, then this is your chance to get in. Now, of course, as usual, we always believe that you don't have to participate. You don't have to be right on every stock. You have to be right on the stocks that you buy, that's it. So if you're looking as an outsider and you don't know, you feel like a lot of all this uncertainty, you don't feel, feel free to not participate. Right, okay. Thank you so much, MJ, for yep. the detailed insight. Uh, definitely our viewers who benefited a lot from today's video. Uh, if you did enjoy and benefited from today's sharing, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more of this kind of video. Also, don't forget to follow all of our social medias, Facebook, Instagram. We even have a LinkedIn account. If you don't know already, yeah, yeah. links are all in the description below and we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.